this episode of Velocity Labs, we're hacking up the eclipse. All right, so remember like almost two years ago exactly when I went to the salvage yard and I picked up this lens to make a cold air intake setup? Yeah, me neither. So we're gonna pretend like it was just last week and it doesn't take me two years to get around to doing stuff. So we're making a cold air intake setup. All right, so the goal of this is to do a simple mod and just get some cooler air into the intake. I also wanna keep the aesthetics of the car, so I'm gonna try to hide it. And I like to be sneaky. So first thing that we need to do is to cut the hole. Just eyeball where you want the opening, mark it down and hack it up. Now, I thought I was being clever when I came up with the idea to try an electric hot knife here, but uh, this lens is way too stout for that. It barely even makes a dent in the plastic. So we're going to break out the old standby of using a death wheel. Using the cutoff wheel here was actually kind of interesting. When you're cutting the plastic lens, it shreds it and makes it into like this stringy spiderweb looking mess. And though it kind of looks like cotton candy, it definitely doesn't taste like it. Trust me on this one. Oh, yeah, and in case you're wondering, when I'm filming car videos, I'm usually watching car videos at the same time. All right, let's go back to cutting this. The, uh, that was crazy, like the spider webbing just looked nasty. Just take your time here and you should be able to make some fairly straight cuts. Although this process wasn't great. So if anybody has any ideas on how to cut straight lines in a plastic lens like this, post them up in the comments. I'd love to hear them. I may be doing this again in the future. The vertical cuts are a little trickier and a smaller wheel will help keep you from going too far here. Once those are all done, just grab a screwdriver and pop out the lens. Then we can grab our Sharpie and mark out where we want to cut on the back of the lens. Cutting the back is exactly the same as the front, although the plastic in the rear of the lens is much thinner and uh, it cut a bit easier than the front did. Once that's done, we can do the same thing as before and then just pop out the lens with the screwdriver. The lens needed a bit of cleaning up at this point, so I scraped all the slag away with a, a utility knife and a screwdriver. The knife was able to make some decent cuts on the rougher edges as well to smooth things out. I cut out the front first and then I cut out the back making sure not to cut into any of the support sections. This light is actually two pieces, so you kind of have to be careful where you're cutting. There we go, nice and shiny. Now, let's do a quick test fit. Yep, that looks pretty good. Except for, you know, the, uh, the big gaping black hole where a nice clear lens should be. Yeah, that's just not gonna work for me. Let's go ahead and fix that. Oh, and before we do, we can see that it's pretty obvious that this really isn't gonna do anything with the headlights down. They're simply just blocking too much airflow. But when we raise the headlights up, we can see that we get a straight through visual right to the air filter. The rear hole behind the headlight isn't very large, but it's there. And we may end up making it bigger if needed, but we'll test this setup first and go from there. Oh, and if we remove the headlight assembly completely, then this will work fine with the pop-ups in the down position as well. We may be doing that in the future, but for now, if I want colder air, I'll just keep the headlights up. Besides, all of my illegal street racing is almost always done at night anyway. Or, I mean, legal track racing. Look over here. Anyway, back to uh, that unsightly hole that we need to cover up. And I, I think I have just the thing laying around somewhere. Yep, and I do. It's screen mesh, or just mesh, or screen, or whatever it is. I have no idea where this came from, but I've had it forever. I think it's just screen door stuff from Home Depot. I don't know, whatever. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna go ahead and cut some out and trim it to fit. Now, I'm gonna leave it overlapping a bit on the edges. And the color really doesn't work for me because it's not actually helping hide the, the hole in the, in the lens. So we're gonna go ahead and paint it white first. But before I painted the mesh, I used some paint thinner to really clean up the headlight and get rid of any grease or residue on it. Then I just laid the mesh down on some cardboard and sprayed it down, making sure to get both sides. There we go, perfect. Er, Actually not perfect. So when I was spraying this, I actually put it on too thick and, uh, and it clogged up uh, a whole bunch of the, the little holes in the, in the screen mesh. I tried saving it by punching out the holes uh, with, a, with a dart that I had lying around and I even tried blowing it out with compressed air, but uh, it just wasn't savable. Oh well, so I just uh, cut another pattern and then uh, I sprayed it better the second time. I actually ended up holding the, uh, the screen up outside with my fingers and then just spraying it that way and I got a lot better uh, coverage without clogging it up. There we go, perfect. I had a little extra trimming to do and then we're gonna go ahead and epoxy this down. 
I used a wire wheel to scuff up some of the main areas to really give the epoxy something to bite into. It'll just, uh, it'll adhere better that way if it's uh, a little bit of a rougher surface. I used some paint thinner to really clean up the headlight and get rid of any grease or residue on it. Uh, so what I did is I taped it down first and then just hit it with epoxy. I kept the epoxy as far back on the lens as possible here to make sure that it's not going to be visible from the outside of the car when the headlight is installed. I just slowly worked it into the mesh on the back edges and kept pressing the mesh down where needed. I also made a couple cuts where the mesh was bunching up in a few places to help it sit flush against the lens. As it starts to gum up and harden, you can slowly pull the tape away, and then as it really started to get sticky, I kept stretching the mesh taut until it was finally set up, and, uh, and that gave me a really nice tight finish around the, uh, around the lens. No, it's not invisible, but the, uh, the mesh draws much less attention than the black hole that was there before it. All right, so first up, we're gonna drive with the original lens in place. We're gonna drive for two minutes at 50 miles an hour with the headlights down. Our starting intake temperatures at the beginning of this run was 108 degrees. Halfway through, they dropped to 98 degrees, and then we ended the run at 93 degrees at the two minute mark. Now, the lowest point recorded during the run was 90 degrees intake temps. Next, we'll do the same two minutes at 50 miles an hour with the headlights up. Now, our intake temps at the start of this run was 97 degrees. Halfway through the run, they were down to 93 degrees, and then they ended at 86 degrees, and the lowest point of the run was 85 degrees. All right, so already this is a really interesting bit of information. Even if you don't have a modified front lens, if you have a 90 or 91 DSM, you're gonna get colder intake temps with the headlights up. So if you're racing, pop those headlights up. All right, so we'll go ahead and uh, swap those out, and we're gonna put in our sneaky new modified front lens. Ah, so sneaky. Can't even see that. That's not bad. Uh, I'm kind of impressed with that, actually. Yep, that, uh, that'll do nicely. Yeah, it looks a little off when you stare at it, but uh, just at a glance, it certainly doesn't stick out. I like it. All right, let's go test the other numbers. Same thing, headlights down first, two minutes at 50 miles an hour. All right, for the start of this run, the car was sitting idling for a bit while I was changing the lens out, and the intake temps started at 104 degrees. Halfway through the run, they dropped to 90 degrees. The intake temperatures ended at 88 degrees, and then the lowest temp recorded was 86 degrees. All right, so having the modified lens in there and the headlights in the down position gave us basically the same improvement as having the headlights up with the stock front lens. I'll call that a win already. All right, and finally, we'll run with the headlights up with the modified lens. Here's where I'm expecting the biggest change in our intake temperatures. Same thing, two minutes at 50 miles an hour. Now, this run had started with the coldest intake temps, and that's because as soon as I was done with the last run, I just turned around, popped the headlights up, and started the next log. So there wasn't any idle time to heat up the engine bay. In hindsight, I probably should have done that, but if you look at the difference between the runs with the headlights down, they both started pretty warm, but the modified headlight still ends up quite a bit cooler than the regular one. So yeah, I probably should have started a little bit warmer, but um, honestly, I don't know if it's actually gonna make a difference or not anyway. Besides, I'll let you in on a little secret. I'm not actually a scientist. Anyway, starting temps with the modified lens and the headlights up was 86 degrees. Halfway through the run, the intake temps were down to 80 degrees, and then at the end of the run, they were 81 degrees. The lowest point was 80. And jackpot, intake temps are a full five degrees colder across the board with the modified headlights. I'm gonna call that a win. But a little bit of side information, and um, this is actually even more or less scientific than the last test, but uh, as soon as I finished the test, I just went ahead and started driving home, uh, but I was watching my intake temps as I went, uh, keeping the, uh, the headlights up just to see how, if they're gonna get any lower. And uh, they actually got into the low 70s. The lowest that they got was 72 degrees. 
So you're looking at a potential 13 degrees cooler with the modified lens. All right, so my theory is why the intake temperatures kept dropping as I kept driving is because the hot air in the engine bay just kept getting circulated out of there with the cold air intake in there. So the longer I was driving, it cleared out all the hot air and then just kept piping fresh air into the intake, which gave us those uh, extra low temperatures. Now, I don't know if the other lens in the other configuration is gonna show that dramatic of a drop as well, uh, if we continue to run it longer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that test. I'm gonna run both of them for like uh, four or five minutes instead of just two. And uh, I'll post that follow-up video in a couple weeks here. All right, so I'm pretty happy with those results. I might be doing a follow-up with this video where I make even further modifications to get even cooler air into the intake. If you're interested in seeing that, just let me know in the comments. Also, keep an eye on my Instagram and my second channel, which is VLabs2. I do lots of daily updates, stuff like that on those as well. Next up, we're gonna be doing the HX35 install, so get ready for more boost. So yeah, I probably sharted, <laughs> I probably sharted, <laughs> yikes, <laughs> true.